What you see on the screen is a robot basic simulation of a walking humanoid. This simulation can be programmed just like a real robot. This is a very powerful concept, especially if you consider that most hobbyist-oriented hobbyist walking robots have few, if any, sensors that allow you to experiment with realistic programming models. Notice the robot is walking up this slight incline. Every time the robot gets across the screen, it will get a new environment. Here we have a much steeper hill. Notice that as the robot walks over this uneven terrain, that he'll be leaning forward and backward in order to maintain his balance. Now it is true that this simulation is only true dimensional. But this really has a big educational advantage. Since the robot only has to balance in two dimensions, even novice programmers can experiment with walking without being intimidated or overwhelmed with all the complexities involved. Once you master this two-dimensional model, you can apply the principles of balance to more complex situations, i.e. a three-dimensional robot. An article featuring this robot basic simulation is being published in Servo Magazine. If you're interested in any type of hobby robotics, I urge you to pick up a copy of Servo at your local newsstand or consider subscribing to Servo, I think you'll find it a wonderful magazine for robot hobbyists. Let me give you a little taste, though, of how easy it is to program this simulation. Take a look at this short program. The init module simply initializes the man and prepares him for the simulation. Next we have a small for loop that goes through 15 times and calls a subroutine called LT or left leg forward. You can actually in the simulation program each of the joints and control everything individually. But we've provided a sequence of subroutines such as the left leg forward subroutine that can do some macro functions for you, making it very easy to begin to learn how to program the simulation. The go sub draw man actually performs all the calculations and creates the man in each of the poses. In this case, it case, will do 15 different poses because it's being called 15 times as the loop proceeds. If you just call the draw man subroutine by itself and the man is off balance, you will see him fall simply from the draw man call. Let's run this program and watch what happens. Notice the left leg does in fact move forward. Let's see it again. If we change the program, instead of left leg forward, if we did left thigh forward, this new macro will change the way the man moves his leg. Watch carefully. Notice this time the thigh moves forward but not the entire leg. The orientation below the knee stays the same as it did before. Watch again. It's exactly these kinds of motions that we have pre-programmed, or you can create some of your own that make it very easy to learn how to deal with this robot. Let's look at this new enlarged program. The beginning of the program 
is just like it was before, where we move the left thigh forward. The second part of the program moves the right leg backward, effectively moving the man forward if his pivot point, that is his weight, is balanced on that right leg, which it is by default. If we run this program, you'll see the man now move his, lift his left leg up and then move forward. Notice we're producing this walking action very easily using the simulation commands. Now we can add to this. For example, we could do a go sub body forward and run the program again. And in addition to moving his leg, he'll now lean forward as he moves. Notice the lean. We can add even more to these things. For example, by having a go sub left arm forward and a go sub right arm backward. Notice how nicely the man seems to move now. This demonstrates how easy it is to move the man to a variety of poses as you learn how to make him walk. This is exactly how you program most of those toy robots that can walk. They're simply programmed by creating a series of poses. But that's exactly why if they were faced with uneven terrain, they would fall flat. You can proceed with this particular simulation and learn how to balance the, the robot by gathering information about his current balance point and deciding on which foot he's currently pivoting his weight around. If you'd like to learn more, read the Servo article. And if you want to know more about Robot Basic, visit our webpage at robotbasic.com. Enjoy!